Hello! In this video, I'll show you how to create backup jobs for VMware vSphere virtual machines in Nakivo Backup and Replication. To perform a successful backup of VMware vSphere VMs, make sure you have completed the following steps first. Add your vCenter server or standalone ESXi host to the inventory. Have at least one transporter in your environment. Create a backup repository. Now you can backup your vSphere VMs in the Kivo Backup and Replication by creating a VMware backup job. To create a backup job, click Create in the dashboard and then select VMware vSphere Backup Job. This opens the new backup job wizard for VMware vSphere and you'll have five simple steps to complete. First, you've got the source step. In the source step, select the VMs you want to back up. You can add VMware VMs to your backup job by selecting one of the inventory views, which is set to Hosts and Clusters by default. The Hosts and Clusters view shows the inventory tree of your VMs in the left pane and displays all VMware items such as clusters, hosts, folders, resource pools, and VMs. With Nakivo Backup and Replication, you can add an entire container to a backup job. When you add or remove VMs from the container, this is automatically reflected in the backup job. If you don't want specific VMs within the container to be backed up, you can simply exclude them from the backup job. The container will still be protected except for the excluded VMs. You can also drag and drop the selected VMs to change their priority in the backup job. When the VMs and templates view is selected, the inventory tree displays VMware hosts, VMs, and VM templates. In the policy view, you can create rules that allow you to easily locate and automatically add matching items to your backup jobs. To assign multiple rules to a single backup job, click Add Another Rule. Policy rules available for VMware vSphere backup jobs can be based on VM name, tag, location, size, amount of RAM, power state, and so on, or a combination of these parameters. Now let's create a policy that would scan the inventory to find and protect all powered on VMs with the tag backup. To do so, select VM tag in the search by list of parameters and then type backup in search criteria. Click add another rule where the search by parameter will be set to VM power state and search criteria to power it on. Then click next to go to the next step. In the destination step of the wizard, choose one of the available backup repositories to which you want to back up the VMs you selected. You can set the VMs to be backed up to different backup repositories in advanced options by clicking on the target destination drop-down list. In this step, you can also exclude VM disks that you do not want to back up or map source VMs to existing backups if you have previously backed up a VM and want to avoid running full VM backups again. Now, click Next to proceed to Step 3. In the Schedule step, you can choose to run the backup job manually by selecting the Do Not Schedule Run On Demand checkbox or set up a flexible schedule for your job runs. After clicking in the Schedule drop-down list, several options are displayed. You can choose to run the backup job daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, periodically. If you want to run the job only after a previous one is completed, select Run After Another Job and then link the jobs together. In our case, let's run the backup job of our tagged VMs periodically every three hours on workdays. You can add more details by specifying the start time of the job in the starting add box, as well as the end time in the ending box. If the job is not completed by the time specified, the job will be automatically stopped. If necessary, you can select the Effective From checkbox, which allows you to pick a date on which you need the schedule to come into effect. You can also choose to have more than one schedule for the backup job by clicking Add Another Schedule. In addition to workday backups, I want to perform one backup per day on weekends. So, let's select Daily, Weekly from the drop-down list and click Weekends. Click Show Calendar to see all the backup jobs in the calendar view, including the time it took different backup jobs to run in the past and the predicted job duration in the future. 
Here you can get a bird's eye view of all your jobs, allowing you to easily find open time slots for new jobs and as a result, ensure the shortest backup windows possible. Once the job schedule is set, click Next to proceed to the retention step. In the retention step, you can configure the retention policy for your backup jobs and set the number of recovery points. A recovery point represents the backed up virtual machine at a particular moment in time. You can specify the number of recovery points you want to be kept in the backup repository using the grandfather, father, son retention scheme. Keep in mind that with Nakivo Backup and Replication, you can save up to 4,000 recovery points for each VMware VM, which allows you to go back at any point in time you need. Let's select Keep One Recovery Point Per Month for 12 months to have the end of the month backup stored for 12 months. Click Next to proceed to the Options step, where you can configure the backup job options. In the Job Name box, you can modify the name of your backup job. Then you can enable the App Aware mode to ensure that Nakivo Backup and Replication performs application-consistent backups of Windows-based environments. For this purpose, the software uses VMware Guest OS queuing, which relies on Microsoft's Volume Shadow Copy Service, VSS, running inside the VMs. If your application is not VSS aware or runs on Linux, Nakivo Backup and Replication allows you to run custom pre-freeze and post-thaw products to enable application-consistent VM backups. A pre-freeze script is executed before a snapshot of a VM is created, and a post-thaw script is executed after the snapshot has been created. By clicking Settings next to App Aware Mode, you can specify for which VMware VMs to enable the Application Aware Mode. As for change tracking, the Use VMware CBT option is selected by default, which enables the VMware Changed Block Tracking feature for source VMs. VMware CBT allows the software to quickly identify the data blocks that have changed since the last job run and copy only those blocks, which speeds up VM processing. When Use Proprietary Method is selected, Nikivo Backup and Replication performs incremental backups using the Nikivo Proprietary Change Tracking Technology. This feature requires reading the contents of all VM disks to determine which data blocks have changed since the last job run. When you select No Change Tracking Always Full, Nikivo Backup and Replication transfers the full data set for every VM backup. Next, you can enable network acceleration to compress and reduce traffic between sites to speed up data transfer. Set network acceleration on enabled if you plan to backup over WAN or slow LAN links. Nakivo Backup and Replication uses AES-256 encryption to protect VM backups, which is the de facto worldwide encryption standard. When the encryption option is enabled, encryption will be enabled in flight which means that all VM backups sent over the internet are encrypted before the first bit leaves your organization and travels over WAN. Note that to use network acceleration and encryption, you need to have at least one transporter installed on the source side and another one on the target side. When VM verification is enabled, Nakivo Backup and Replication checks the integrity of the backup jobs using either screenshot verification or boot verification. In the background, after the backup is completed, the product creates a new empty VM with networking disabled on the specified VMware vSphere host and mounts the VM disks to the new VM directly from the backup repository as ISCSI targets. When screenshot verification is selected, after the VM is powered on, Nakivo Backup and Replication waits for the time specified in the settings, checks that the VM is powered on and takes a screenshot of the user interface of the VM's operating system. When boot verification is selected, Nakivo Backup and Replication checks the availability of VMware tools. Now let's enable screenshot verification by choosing the target container and the target data store to be used for the VM's boot up. I'll keep the other default options. With skip swap files and partitions enabled, Nakivo Backup and Replication automatically skips swap files and partitions during the backup process. This results in faster and smaller backups. 
When you enable Skip Unused Blocks, Nakivo Backup and Replication automatically skips unused disk blocks in blocks occupied by deleting files during processing of Windows-based source objects. This feature allows for reducing backup storage space in object processing time. If the type of backup repository that you selected in the destination step of the wizard is set to incremental with full backups, you can specify how often full backups should be created under full backup settings. When synthetic full is selected in the full backup mode drop-down list, Nakivo Backup and Replication first performs an incremental backup and then transforms the available data in the backup repository into a full backup file. When active full is selected, Nakivo Backup and Replication reads all VM data from the source data store and transfers it to the backup repository. Under pre and post actions, specify the email address in the Send Job Run Reports To box to send you email notifications about job completion status. You can set up Microsoft Exchange and Microsoft SQL Server Log Truncation by selecting the corresponding options and settings. First, select the checkboxes next to the VMs running Microsoft Exchange or SQL Server and then provide the credentials next to each VM. Nakivo Backup and Replication allows you to run a script before a backup job begins and after the job has been completed. To do so, select the Run Local Pre-Job Script option and provide the script path in the machine on which the director is installed. Additionally, provide job behavior settings and error handling settings. In data transfer, the transport mode is set to automatic selection by default. When this option is selected, Nakivo Backup and Replication automatically selects the best transport mode available based on your VMware environment configuration. Alternatively, you can specify how the software should transfer the data. When you have the direct SAN access configured, you can use SAN only. If you are running the Nakivo transporter on the source ESXi host, you can set this option to hot add only. When the LAN only option is selected, Nakivo Backup and Replication retrieves VM data over LAN only. To distribute the data protection workload, optimize network traffic, and improve data transfer speeds, you can deploy multiple transporters in your environment. With the default automatic selection option enabled, Nakivo Backup and Replication automatically determines which transporters are the closest to the source host and use those transporters to retrieve data from source VMs. When Manual Configured for All VMs is selected, you can manually specify a single transporter to be used for retrieving data from source VMs. The Manual Configured Per Host option allows you to manually specify which transporter should be used for retrieving data from each source host. Keep in mind that the target transporter for the backup job will always be the one assigned to the backup repository. You can also limit the maximum number of transporter tasks used by the job by selecting the Limit Transporter Load to checkbox. A task in this case is a backup of a single VM disk. Use the setting in Bandwidth Throttling to configure how LAN or WAN bandwidth is consumed by Nakivo Backup and Replication jobs. You can manage bandwidth consumption by setting bandwidth rules. When a bandwidth rule is applied to your job, the speed of data transfer from source to target will not exceed the specified limit. Click Finish and Run to run the job. The backup job is now completed. As you can see on the dashboard, you can track the speed of data transfer, the amount of transferred data, the event specific to the job, and the used transporters. Under the Virtual Machine screen, you can click on the backed up VM to open the VM details along with a screenshot of the recovered VM. As you can see with Nakivo Backup and Replication, you can easily backup VMware vSphere Virtual Machines by creating a backup job that specifies which VMs should be backed up, where the backups should be located, how often the backup job should be run, and what job options should be used. To learn more about Nakivo Backup and Replication, visit nakivo.com and find out how easy it is to protect all of your virtual, physical, cloud, and SaaS applications and services with an all-in-one solution. 
If you want to try Nakivo Backup and Replication in your environment, download the 15-day free trial with enterprise-grade functionality and zero capacity limits.